Hey guys, it's Viv and welcome back to my channel. So I have a whole bunch of videos like pre-filmed, but I think this is going to be the last one that I upload before Christmas. So Merry Christmas if you are celebrating and if not, I hope you guys are having a great winter slash holiday season. But anyways, my Christmas gift for you guys this year is a sewing tutorial and this time I am very, very, very excited to show you guys what we are going to make today and Melody is modeling it. So I know that the cottage core trend has really been big this 2020. So I decided to create this really adorable, multi-layered, huge, poofy cottage core um, like dress for American Girl doll. This dress actually isn't as hard as it looks, at least I think so personally. The hardest part probably is going to be the gathering and also doing the facing on the bodice, but all of that is super easy once you get the hang of it. So um, yeah, this pattern um, that I used to create the bodice because the skirt does not have a pattern is actually available um, online free to use I just found it on the internet so I will link it down in the description box down below and I will explain it as I go on in the tutorial but I'm going to keep this intro short and we're gonna get right into making this dress um, because I don't know how long it's gonna be and I hope you guys enjoy so let's go ahead and get started so the materials that I'm using are actually from a Ikea top sheet like in a bed set they're made out of cotton broadcloth so really any cotton fabric will work or anything that's non stretch you will need two rectangles um, for the skirt and I will put the dimensions up on the screen you'll also need some scrap fabric to do the facing of the bodice and the bodice pattern that I'm using is Addie's tartan plaid dress I'm using the front of the bodice the back of the bodice and the sleeves and here is a rough sketch of what my dress is going to look like. Um, emphasis on rough because I cannot draw. So as you can see, um, I wrote in like I wanted to have like an exposed ruffle and a gather and I wanted to have a, like um, a visible waistband but I didn't end up doing that. And um, here you can see on my fabric I'm just showing off um, the pre-hemmed edge that the top sheet came with. Um, if you're going to do this with like a top sheet, a bed sheet, a curtain, um, I would really recommend utilizing the pre-done hem. So let's go to the bodice and first thing you're going to want to do is cut it out how it's directed like on the fold whatever But this bodice piece is actually a little bit too big for what we're going to do So at the center front we are going to take it in by a quarter of an inch using a straight stitch If you want you can just cut the pieces out separately and sew them together at the center front But regardless of how you do it um, What you want to do after that is unfold it and it looks something like this and then sew the back pieces on at the shoulder seam By the way, I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance for all these seams unless stated otherwise. But now what you wanna do is take that scrap of fabric that we cut out earlier, that we reserved earlier, and place it over the bodice um, around like the neckline hole that you see here, and make sure that a little bit can hang off each edge of the neckline on all sides. And mine is a little bit small at the shoulder seams. So you can see there's not a lot of fabric um, peeking over. So if I were you, I would cut this a little bit bigger, but it doesn't really matter in the end because these edges will be flipped on the inside because this is what we are going to do to start the facing. So go ahead and kind of trim that down to size, make sure there's not too much extra hanging out. And we are on the good side of the fabric right now, but I'm just gonna secure that with pins so that it doesn't move around too much. And I'm going to flip my bodice over to the wrong side so that I am looking at the side with all the seams like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repin the bodice onto um, this piece of fabric. I'm not going to move the piece of fabric or anything, I am just going to pin the bodice on around the neckline and then I'm going to sew around the neckline using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. So this time we are not using a quarter inch seam allowance, it is going to be 1 8 of an inch um, and that's just going to make the flipping process a little bit easier because there's less bulk. But yeah, pay attention to what I'm doing here on the screen, I am pinning around the neckline like so. Um, and I'm also going to make sure that the shoulder seams are lying flat and then I am going to sew around this using a one of an one eighth of an inch seam allowance and a straight stitch. And from the back, you can also see um, I'm demonstrating here that each edge needs to kind of hang off where the neckline is a little bit. But as you can see, it was a little bit short um, where the shoulder seams were. So. I would just be careful if I were you doing that. So next thing what you want to do is go ahead and cut um, off the excess facing from the whole of the neckline. So don't cut off those pieces that 
um, extend beyond the seam, cut what's on the inside, if that makes sense. Um, you can see what I'm doing here. Just cut it out so it looks like a neckline again and not a piece of fabric that is attached to the neckline. And don't forget to clip the corners as well to make flipping this right sides, um, out a little bit easier. Although I don't, I don't think it's right sides out. But I don't know. So from the front of the bodice, it'll look something like this. And then what you do is you take those pieces of the facing and you fold them back to the wrong side. And you can see that it creates a nice clean edge. And this is how we create the clean facing for our bodice. So clean and professional. I love doing this technique on um, especially square necklines. I think it looks so pretty. But what we're going to do to finally finish that off is we are going to push the seam allowance towards the inside of the neckline. So on the side that has the facing, you can see what I'm doing here, is that the seam allowance is not on the bodice, it is on the facing. And then I am going to stitch um, that in place again on the sides, like stitch the seam allowance. Um, down so under stitch it under stitch the facing um, if you are familiar with that term that is what we are doing so that from the front um, you cannot see um, the facing and it won't flip up and also give that a little iron to make sure that everything lies flat and it is nice and crisp and doesn't it look so satisfying when you iron it oh it looks so clean so professional and once you get the hang of it this is actually super easy to do and a great technique to finish off your garments so let's move on to the sleeve. So here I have cut out my two sleeve pieces and I've also um, transferred the markings from the sleeve pieces onto my sleeve pieces using a water soluble fabric marker. And in between those um, like points that we marked, that's where you sew a line of basting stitches, which is um, like a loose line of stitching. And then what you wanna do is pull on the bobbin thread to gather those points um, of the sleeve to create that puff sleeve effect and um, you want to gather it kind of you want to spread out the gathers as easy as evenly as you possibly can and um, just gather them so that is the sleeve um, it becomes the same length as the arm side and then face those right sides together and sew it into place now this step can be a little bit difficult um, if you need to you can gather these by hand I think that makes it a little bit easier but um, just take your time don't be afraid to mess up and then once you sew on both sleeves it'll look something like this and it looks very cute so now what I'm gonna do is fold up the bottom of the sleeve to create a casing for my elastic the original sleeve pattern um, requires you to hem it and then attach the elastic further up so it creates a ruffle sleeve. You can do that if you want to. I personally didn't want that look for my dress, so I created a casing instead. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two pieces of elastic that are four and a half inches in length, and I am going to string them through that casing in my sleeve piece like so. I'm going to make sure I don't lose the ends, and then I am going to fold um, the sleeve in half and match up those two sides, pin it in place, and then I am I'm just going to continue my pinning down the side seam like this and then sew that into place using a straight stitch and a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then the bodice should look something like this. You can see it coming together, a very cute, very cottage core. I love the way this dress looks. And um, on the back of the bodice, on the left side, you wanna make sure that you mark a line that is one inch away from the raw edge of the back, like how I did here. And that's just um, for when we do the closure of the dress in the back. So let's go onto the skirt. And here is my bottom skirt piece. You can see that um, it's is the side with the pre-hem and it's also 60 inches in length so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to sew two lines of basting stitches across this raw edge here to um gather the fabric and then what i am going to do is i'm also going to do that on the top skirt which is 30 inches but i'm not going to gather it just yet so here's the top skirt laid all out like this. You can see it is 30 inches in length, which means our bottom skirt is going to be double that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull gently on the bobbin threads of these basting stitches very gently because the last thing that you want is for these um, like stitches to snap and then you have to re-sew them and regather the skirt. Last thing you want to do because it's such like a large amount of fabric. So just be gentle, take your time and make sure the gathers are spread out evenly and gather it until it is 30 inches and matches the length of the top skirt. Like you can see that I am doing here. 
and um, then what you want to do is take the top skirt and flip it right sides together with the bottom skirt aligning the bottom raw edge of the top skirt with the gathered top edge of the bottom skirt. I hope that made sense. Um, and then once you do that, you want to sew them together using a straight stitch and a quarter in quarter of an inch seam allowance. Oh my gosh, this voiceover is so long. I'm like stumbling over my words. But yeah, once you have that, it'll look something like this and flipped up, it'll look super cute, super ruffly. And then what you want to do is repeat that same gathering technique on the top skirt but you want to gather the skirt down to the length of the bodice and then um, once you get to that point where we marked earlier where that part is going to be the closure be sure beyond that point um, so the last inch of the left side should be left ungathered just so that when we create the closure later it won't be as bulky so be sure to spread the gathers out as evenly as you possibly can again take your time don't worry about um you know getting this done as fast as you can nobody's timing you well unless you're on like a timed sewing show that would be kind of fun like a master chef sewing show i would watch that I would participate in that. I think that is so fun. But anyways, you can see what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to flip the bodice right sides together with the top skirt and sew them into place to attach the skirt to the bodice. And then it will look something like this. Our dress is coming together now, looking so cute. So for the closure, I am going to attach Velcro to the top quarter of the bodice um, like that. And then on the back or on the rest of the skirt, I'm actually not going to sew it right sides together. Um, I actually just did a rolled hem on either side so that it would just be free and loose so that when I photograph it, it can flow freely. And then here's a montage of me. Um, it already started because I didn't talk fast enough during that voiceover, but I was trying to decide what can I add to this dress to spice it up a little bit. So I tried gathering the front. I tried adding some lace and some ribbon. I asked you guys on Instagram, what should I do? And somebody suggested slap a bow on it. And I was like, that's a great idea. So, <laughs> so I created a bow out of some scrap fabric. And I love the way it looks. So I am just going to go ahead and attach that to the center of the bodice using a needle and thread. And then here's my finished dress. I'm so happy with the way this dress turned out. I'm gonna try to make um, a similar one if I can um, so that I can do a pink Christmas um, photo shoot which will be um, up on my AGRG which is at Delight Delights just like how my YouTube channel is spelled with the underscore and the three and everything. So if you want to see that be sure you follow me on Instagram but other than that that is it for today's video. Thank you so so much for watching it. I really hope you and you guys enjoyed watching me make this dress as much as I had fun creating it. So if you liked it be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and other amazing American Girl doll videos such as more sewing tutorials, outfit videos, hairstyle videos, and more. And if you have any suggestions on what type of things you want to see me make, be sure you let me know in the comment section down below as well. Tag me in your photos on Instagram of your DIY recreations. And have a great um, holiday season. Again, if you are celebrating, and if not, I hope you guys are having a great winter season and you guys are staying safe um, but still having fun at home with your loved ones or virtually, you know, via Zoom or whatever. But yeah, that is it for me. That's it for this video. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you next time in another one. Take care. Bye-bye.